Young Show. Hello. One of the most important things about the mail that we receive from you is that it indicates your preferences. And in the last few months, two of your outstanding preferences were Jacques Mahoney and Casey Adams. And, well, since we couldn't agree with you more, we were delighted to ask them to come back with us again tonight. Now, in our story tonight, Mr. Mahoney and Mr. Adams are both happily married. And here they are, with their respective spouses. How much did they soak you for that piece of junk? Junk? Are you kidding? Just look at the green in that wood. Isn't that beautiful? Ignore him, Peggy. It's the only way I've been able to live with him for three and a half years. <laughs> I think it's a real bargain. Peg found it in the back of an antique shop. What'd you pay for it, honey? Two bucks? Five dollars. You got gypped. Honey? Huh? Is that light enough for you? No, no. Much too dark. Uh, well, maybe you better put a little more light in it, huh? I think so. Yeah, too dark. Hmm? Takes a little bit more than sandpaper, Peggy. Come on, a little more elbow grease there. Hey, look who's talking back here, the armchair general. Oh, you. <laughs> you. <laughs> oh. Hey, Bill. You're not doing anything. Mind getting the door? Oh. Well, I, I'm pretty comfortable. Go on, get it, get it, will you? Oh. Hey, how about this? Looks pretty good, don't you think? Yeah. Sure. Oh. Thank you very much. It's going to be beautiful. Peggy? Yeah? It's for you. Oh, from what? Yeah. Oh. Newman's fine furs. <laughs> Must be a mistake. <laughs> no, here. Mrs. Dan O'Hara, 719 Woodland Road. Doesn't look like a mistake to me. Oh. Well, come on, open it. Uh, See what's in it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, what is it? To be a mistake. Well, you always said you wanted a mink coat, didn't you? Oh, the woman that doesn't want mink doesn't live. Well, Dan, what is it? Is it some kind of a joke? I mean, well, you know, I've been giving lessons to old Mr. Newman. Yeah, mm -hmm. I hear he broke ninety the other day and practically flipped his lid with excitement. Well, I told him if he stayed with it, I'd have him under ninety in a year. And? And he said that if I did, he'd send my wife a mink coat from his shop. You know, I'd practically forgotten about it. Oh. Yesterday he broke 90, his year was up, and so you have a mink coat. Oh, you dear. had to be an accountant. <laughs> oh, honey, not on that. Oh, no, no, get it off me. Get it off. Oh. oh. It's wonderful. Oh, Dan, it's wonderful. <laughs> oh. Mommy. I... Patty, come in, come in quick and see what I've got. Is it yours? Yes, it's mine. It's all mine. Oh, it's so soft. <laughs> yes, isn't They're it? never too young. Oh. Hey, hey, wait a minute. And now that I've got it, where do I wear it? To the market? Mm -mm. To the movies? No. I've got it. The opera is opening in Chicago next week. The opera? Well, why not? It's the plushiest thing around. Gee, wouldn't that be a thrill? Well, if you want to drive up for it, I can take care of Pat. Yeah. yeah. Dan? Hmm? Could we? Well, I'm more of the hillbilly type myself, but... Well, I guess I could stand it just as well. Oh, you <laughs> so, you oh. oh, can't you just see me walking down that main aisle in this? But what will I wear under it? <laughs> It's beautiful. Yes, it looks just like her, doesn't it? Well, it certainly looks like it belongs under a mink coat. Let's try the coat on. Oh. Yes. Excuse me, madam, I'll be right back. Yes. Crazy about it. <laughs> How much is it? I don't know. I can't find the price tag. See if you can. Yeah, I'm under here. You, you won't find another like it between here and Chicago. And only $110. <laughs> is that all? Yes, it's a steal, isn't it? Oh, definitely. I'll take it. And uh, now may I show you some accessories? Yes. 
And uh, where can I open a charge account? I'll do that for you right away. Oh, but I <laughs> And they serve it flaming on long swords like that. And every waiter in the place, you know what they wear? Blue satin knee breeches oh, right no. to there. No. Yeah, just like English footmen. And the well, whole now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, uh, pieces of meat and pearl onions and tomato wedges. Yeah. Uh, what kind of meat? Oh, honey, I don't know. I didn't get the recipe. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Preston says that it was the specialty of the pump room. Now, now which one's Mr. Preston? He, he's Mr. Hodge's brother-in-law. And Mr. Hodge is... The, the, the meatpacking people? You know, you know. Oh, sure. First of all, how'd you happen to meet them? Well, you see, uh, uh, Mr. Hodge is a friend of the Bryants, and they're here in town. They're the Bryant Investment Company. Oh, sure, they're part of that crowd out the country club. That's right. Uh -huh. and, and that's how Mr. Bryant knew Dan, see, mm -hmm. from the club. Mm -hmm. So, when we met them between acts, they uh, invited us to go to the pump room. <laughs> Lee, I don't think I've ever had such a good time. <laughs> well, weren't you nervous? Well, just a little bit at first, I guess I was, but... Oh, I don't know, they were so friendly, and... And, and that coat. It's this mink coat. You know what? It, it, it made me feel as, as if I really belonged. That's what it did. How was the opera? Oh, the what? The opera, remember? Oh, yeah. Hey, you know what else? On top of everything else, they invite us to go to the dinner dance at the country club on Saturday night. Oh, no! Yes, they did. You must have made quite an impression. Uh, love my coat. Uh, you know, Lee, Dan has been the golf pro at that country club for two years, and the Bryans have never even noticed us before. <laughs> oh, the opera, the dance. <laughs> I'd forgotten they have them. Yeah, so had I. I don't think I've danced since before Pat was born. <laughs> What's the matter? Our car. Can you imagine driving up in front of the country club on that old heap? <laughs> well, Dan does it every day. I'm not in a mink coat. No. <laughs> Uh, keep your eye on the ball, remember? Oh, yeah. I wish those girls would get back. I'm starved to death. Well, you know how women are when they get in the department store. Yeah, hip action. I thought Peggy bought a dress last week. She did. That was for the opera. Well, there's a law against wearing the same dress twice? Well, not exactly. Sit down. Let me tell you something. We've had enough for today, anyhow. When Peggy was in high school, she had to go to work. And when I was in the army, she had to take care of my mother, too. So the way I figure, she's got some fun coming to her. Sure. Dan? Oh, Dan, come outside right now. Where's the fire? What's up? Uh, now, remember, I didn't say we'd buy it. Wouldn't buy what? Well, it's parked in the driveway, and it's an absolute dream. Oh, come on, Daddy. Right, yeah, yeah, Patty yeah, what's up? Right. It's a demonstrator. You shouldn't have let her. Mr. Jackson is just lending it to them over the weekend for the dance. Hey, Bill, come on out and get a load of this. Mr. Jackson's no fool. Come on. Yeah. Hi. Why come in the back way? Oh. <laughs> It's a surprise. Marketing in that outfit? Well, thanks. <laughs> it's uh, smart, huh? Peg, it's absolutely beautiful. Ah, oh, <laughs> thanks. Dan, mm -hmm. you'd have been very proud of me today. I'm always proud of you. Yes, but I mean today in particular. Honey, where's Pat? Spending the weekend with the Hodges, you remember. Oh, mm. yeah. Dan? Mm hmm You know, sooner or later, we're going to have to return some of these invitations. Throw a party. Yeah. 
Oh, but it'll have to be an awfully smart party. But first, we've got to do something about this room. Now, if we could just get a new rug and, and, and some clever drapes and have that couch recovered and this chair. Oh, that chair. That has definitely got to go. What's the matter with that chair? Oh, it's too busy. What's too busy? Well, too many flowers and ruffles and things on it. It's just too busy. Sure comfortable. Well, you can get a comfortable chair with that. What's going on out in the kitchen? Oh, it's just an experiment, darling. She may not work out. Who may not work out? Dinner is served, madam. Good night, John. See you at the club in the morning. Good night, Jenny, and I'll see you tomorrow around noon. Good night. Oh, uh, I left your check with Ellen in the kitchen. You may leave any you like. Well, do you think it was a good party? Fine. But you know me. I don't like mobs. <laughs> it only seemed like a mob because this place is so small. You know, the truth is, Dan, we're growing out of this house. Well, honey, you just did it all over. No, I didn't. Only this room. You know what I think? What? I think we ought to put this house on the market. Sell our house? Well, we should get enough out of it to put a down payment on a decent-sized house. And in a nicer neighborhood, too. Nothing wrong with this neighborhood. Oh, it'd be so nice to have Patty grow up in just the right atmosphere. Let's wait until she grows up, huh? But, Dan, I hear this is the perfect time to sell. Then it must be the worst time to buy. Well, now, who can that be? Uh, don't bother. Ellen will get it. Ellen! <sighs> Honey, I can still open the door without any help. Did you call me, madam? Yes, but it's all right. Mr. O'Hara got it. Somebody was at the door. Was everything all right, Mrs. O'Hara? Oh, yes. Fine. Fine, Ellen. The hors d'oeuvres are wonderful. Hey, look who's here. Come on in. Oh, Lee. Hi, Peg. Hi, Bill. Hello, Peggy. Uh, oh, are you two going out? You're kind no. of dressed up. We just happened to be driving by, and we thought we'd... Well, I... I guess we barged in at an inconvenient time. I oh. told you we should have phoned first. What are you talking about, phone? Since when? Uh, we, we, we only had a few people in for cocktails. Nobody you know. And we were just getting rid of some of our obligations. And it was, uh... It was very dreary, really. <laughs> oh, sure. Well, uh, I guess we better go. Well, we were just on our way to the movies, anyway. Dan has a lot of new contacts now, you know, and, uh, and we have to sort of keep up with him. You know how that is. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we know. Well, honey, we don't want to miss the first of the picture. No, we'd better go. Nice to see you. Uh, oh, uh, Bill, wait a minute. Forget the picture. Let me take no, your no, thing. Oh, no, we, no, we, we really can't promised say. ourselves. Really, we can't. Please, please, please stay. It's been an awful long time. Yes, hasn't it? Please? Well, thanks, Lou. Oh, honestly, I have well, to call you so oh, many times, God. you know that. But I have gotten so involved with well, all this. You're trying to explain to me. I understand I all know of you this. Do. Oh, come on, say goodnight to Pat. You haven't seen her in a Bottle cocktails. Already mixed. Save lots of trouble. Well. Hey, new furniture. Pretty stylish. When'd you get all this stuff? About three payments ago. Oh. Must be kind of a heavy load. You're not kidding. New furniture, hi-fi, refrigerator, new car, Patty's dancing lessons, private school. You know, I begin to lay out more than I'm taking in. It just kind of creeps up on you. Can't you cut down somewhere? Well, once you have things, it seems as though you can't get along without them. Even my extra job doesn't help too much. Extra job? It's three nights a week at the Iroquois Athletic Club. An all day at the country club? It's a tough schedule, boy. There's a way I can make a quick killing, though, Bill, and that's a golf tournament. The L.A. Open's coming up pretty quick. It's an awful long shot, Dan. I know, but Gene Littler did it. Gene Littler's 24 years old. Mr. Open, this is Dan O'Hara. About refinancing my house, I was just wondering if you had an answer on it yet. Well, thanks anyway for trying. Bye, Mr. Open. Hi, darling. I was hoping you'd be home. Lee wants you to phone her. 
Well, I can't call her right now, but I will later. Oh, honey, uh, Patsy's at school rehearsing for a play. Could you pick her up just before dinner? Hmm? Sorry, honey, but I can't. I'm having dinner at the club. Oh. I have an appointment with the board. I'm asking for a leave of absence. Why? I want to take a crack at the L.A. Open. Oh, Dan, that's wonderful. It's a million to one shot, but it's been done before. Well, if anybody can do it, you can. <laughs> oh, that must be Mr. Wheeler. I told him just to honk. Mr. Wheeler? Yeah, he's a real estate man. He's been driving me crazy about that house out on Country Club Drive. Peg. Yeah. Honey, we can't afford to make a move like that right now. Oh, Dan. You don't have to worry about it. It doesn't cost one thing just to look. And if you should happen to win, ah, we're in. <laughs> Dan O'Hara is now on the tee. As sensationally good as he was yesterday, he's as sensationally bad today. But then very few men in any sport can come out of retirement and successfully face the grueling competition waiting for him. It's hard to believe it's the same man who made such a brilliant showing yesterday. But that's the game called golf. Even champions have been known to blow a crucial round. is now chipping onto the green. Oh, a beautiful shot. But I'm afraid it's too late. No one can give away eight strokes to the stiff competition Mommy. in the Los Angeles Open. Mommy, are you I expect mom? to be in the money. Yeah, I'm in here, Pat. Hi, Mommy. Well, you see what I made in school today. Look, is that what they teach you at Manning Hall to slam the doors, huh? Now go on, pick up your books and take them in your room. Hang your coat up where it belongs, honey. Don't be so sloppy, will you? Yes, Mommy. And hurry up. Hello, Lee. It's Peg. Oh, I'm fine. No, I'm not either. I feel terrible. I've just been watching the tournament. Isn't it awful? Look, I, I wish I wish you and Bill had come over tonight. Oh, oh gee, thanks. Oh, hi, Bill. Hello, Peggy. Where's Lee? Well, Lee got a hurry call from the PTA, emergency meeting. Did she really? I mean, I wouldn't blame her if she didn't want to see me. I wouldn't either. But Lee's not that kind of people. She'll call you in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want a drink? Sure, I'll have one of those bottled martinis if you have any left. <laughs> All right. Yeah, here they are. What, what happened to Dan? Nothing you shouldn't have expected. But he did so well the first day. It was a fluke. It happens every now and then, in all sports. People play better than they know how, then fizzle out. It was just so humiliating for him. Gee, he, he looked as though he didn't even belong there. He didn't. He was playing way outside his league. Look, Peggy, Dan's a fine golf teacher, one of the best. But a man can't start tournament play at his age and hope to get anywhere. Then why did he do it? Well, the stakes are high, and a guy will do a lot of crazy things when he's panicked. What do you mean, panicked? Panicked. Dan's not the sort of man who can live beyond his means and like it. He's been worried for months. Bills piling up. New furniture, new clothes, private school for Pat. Why, that and your maid's salary alone are almost as much as he earns a month. Well, then why didn't he tell me? I suppose he loves you so much he didn't want to smash that dream world you've been living in. Then why didn't you tell me? I thought of it. Lee said no. But why? Don't interfere, she said. Just stand by to help them pick up the pieces. Oh, Bill. Besides, I haven't seen you too much lately. Well, I know, and I'm sorry about that. Well, it wouldn't have done any good anyway. Frankly, Peggy, I don't see why you needed to be told. You've always been so realistic. You grew up the hard way. How could you fall for all this nonsense? Maybe I just seem to be realistic. 
Maybe I'm not at all. That's some um, dream world you said I've been living in. Been in a long time, huh? Mm. Where to start? The mink coat. Yeah. Sure did snowball, didn't it? You're gonna be all right, Peggy. When Dan comes home, you can straighten things out. Huh? Well, I guess I'd better go. I promised Lee I'd pick her up at 10. Oh, yeah. She'll call you in the morning. Yeah. First thing. Thanks. Phil. You've been a wonderful friend. I won't forget it again. Good night, Peggy. Yeah, good night. to keep me out there, not after the showing I made. Oh, Dad. Bill warned me. How does it feel being married to an idiot? <laughs> I'm not married to an idiot, but you are. Oh, darling, it was all my fault. I'm such a dope. But I'm a dope who loves you. <laughs> hey, what's happened? Well, I like it better this way, don't you? Well... Oh, I'm not going to throw this one of the party. Hi, Dan. Welcome home, boy. Thank you, Lee. Hey, Daddy. Hey. hey, what's going on around here? Well, we never did finish this table, you know. Well, it looks like we're right back where we started from. That's right. Isn't it, Lee? <laughs> In every way. Ah, oh, you. <laughs> Listen, if you're going to help us with this table, you go and get out of those nice clean clothes. And I'll start dinner, okay? Dinner? Where's Ellen? Oh, Ellen doesn't live here anymore. Oh, oh uh, get that, will you, Lee? I'll be right back. Tough luck about the tournament, Dan. Oh, I was a fool to go. Yes, just a minute. Peg! It's a man says you're expecting him. I am. There you are. Thank you. Dan? Mm hmm? It's for you. What is it? Open it. It's a check for $1,500, and it's made out to me. Yeah, well, it won't take care of everything, but it's the start. Oh, you sold your mink coat. Yeah. Yeah, I sure did. Oh, that coat got us into debt, darling, and now it's going to start getting us out, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Peg, huh? easy come, easy go. Oh, no, <laughs> don't get me wrong, Lee. I still think mink coats are just fine, if you can afford them. <laughs> And these new friends, well, there's nothing wrong with them. Except I was just sort of playing outside my own league. Come on, break it up. Now let's get back to work. Oh, All right, Lee, your scraper's no. down here. Oh, Come on, Peggy, pick up that sandpaper now. Let's get going. On the floor, Dan. Come on, there. Happiness grows at our own firesides and is not to be picked in strangers' gardens by Douglas Gerald. Well, good night. See you next week.